Okay, the previous video on subject matter jurisdiction explained that in order for the court to be able to take subject matter jurisdiction over a claim for tax and help the DOJ enforce the IRS's complaint that you owe, three things are necessary. One, a constitutional power to tax must be granted. Two, a constitutional authority to write law must be constitutionally given to Congress with respect to the power granted. And three, Congress must actually write the law authorized by the power and made enforceable by the authority to write law. Three legs of the subject matter jurisdiction. Stool, which creates the standing, the platform that the plaintiff needs to assemble in order to be able to have standing on the platform before the federal court. Subject matter jurisdiction, the authority of the court to act. And the federal government has been arguing for 80 years since the end of World War II that the 16th Amendment is the source of authority for the power to tax income because it creates a new power to tax directly and without any of the limitations applied to most direct taxes under Article I, all direct taxes under Article I, Section 2, Clause 3, and Article I, Section 9, Clause 4. So the IRS and the DOJ and the federal courts and the lower courts, the liberal judges, have been asserting for 80 years that the 16th Amendment creates a new power to tax directly and without limitation. So let's see how this plays out when we try to build the subject matter jurisdiction stool underneath that claim of authority in the 16th Amendment. First, the power to tax. They claim a new power to tax directly is created by the amendment. Does the word direct appear in the amendment? No, it doesn't. It says Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on whatever source derived, without apportionment and without regard to any um, uh, census, okay? 16th Amendment doesn't contain the word direct. So they're arguing a power created that isn't actually granted by the amendment. And in support of that, the Supreme Court said, no, it doesn't create a direct tax. It simply harmonizes the operation of the taxing power. And it's, uh, the income had been sustained before the 16th Amendment, as part of the indirect taxing powers were applied to foreign persons, privileged persons, licensed persons, and corporations. It's a privileged tax, and income can be used as the yardstick. So it had existed before the 16th Amendment. It was just never applied to the American people because they exist by right, not privilege. So the government claims the 16th Amendment created a new power to tax income directly, which lets them now tax the American people. But the 16th Amendment doesn't contain the word direct. The Supreme Court said, no, it's an indirect tax, always has been, and the 16th Amendment permanently classifies it as an indirect tax, because as a tax without apportionment and without proportionate imposition under the census, it can't be direct because those limitations were not repealed or amended, not even with respect to the application of any alleged power under the amendment, created by the amendment. So the word direct isn't there. The Supreme Court said it doesn't create a direct power to tax. And the requirements that direct taxes be amended, uh, be apportioned and, propor and proportionately later not removed, and the Supreme Court said, as a tax without apportionment, without proportionate imposition, the only thing it can be is indirect. And indirect taxes don't have to be apportioned. They only have to be uniform. So there's no conflict. If we allow the 16th Amendment to allegedly create a direct power that's unlimited, well, that's an inherent, irreconcilable conflict that it creates with the Article I provisions that says all direct taxes will be apportioned and laid in proportion to the census. You're essentially trying to use the 16th Amendment to destroy the Article I provisions. You can't use law to destroy law. It's a maxim of law that if there are two interpretations at issue of how the law should be applied, one of which uses law to destroy law, the other of which harmonizes the operation and preserves force of law in all of its 
provisions, you have to adopt the harmonizing rather than the inherently irreconcilable opinion. And recognizing that as a tax without apportionment and without proportionate imposition, which is the language of the amendment, and without stating in the amendment it's direct, the only way to harmonize the powers and the provisions and the clauses of the Constitution is to recognize the 16th Amendment preserves the indirect nature of the tax. It doesn't expand its application beyond what it taxed before, foreigners, licenses, corporations, privileges. The 16th Amendment doesn't reach the American people with a new power to tax directly. The Supreme Court rejected that argument. So leg one of subject matter jurisdiction is missing. There is no authority to tax directly. That's added by the judges in the 1960s. They made it up, just like Roe v. Wade. They made it up, socialist judges. What are they enforcing? They're enforcing the second plank of the Communist Manifesto. The second plank of the Communist Manifesto reads a heavy, progressive, or graduated income tax. That's where you get graduated taxation of income, class warfare, from the Communist Manifesto. So leg one, the power to tax directly, is missing. They can't establish leg one of subject matter jurisdiction. How about leg two, the enabling enforcement clause? Well, they claim the authority is founded in the 16th Amendment. There is no enabling enforcement clause in the 16th Amendment. They fail on leg two. You don't have leg one. You don't have leg two. The subject matter jurisdiction stool is toppling over. It falls on any one. Any element of subject matter jurisdiction that's missing or defective is fatal. It's a fatal defect to the court's claim that it has authority. If you can't establish subject matter jurisdiction, the court can't help. The defects are fatal. No power to tax directly is granted. No authority to write law to enforce that alleged power is granted. Oh, and let's look at the third leg of subject matter jurisdiction, the actual legislation that Congress wrote. Because remember, power granted, authority to write law, and the law you wrote. They're missing number one, no direct power. They're missing number two, no authority to write law. And what does number three? Number three, what was the name of the legislation they wrote in 1913 that implemented the original income tax that they've been claiming now for 110 years? You owe. The name of the legislation was the Underwood-Simmons Tariff Act of October 3rd, 1913. Do you know what a tariff is? A tariff is one form of an impost, the power to tax foreign activity. They never wrote a direct tax piece of legislation. Imposts, a tariff, is indirect taxation. Remember impost, the power to tax foreign activity? A tariff is one form of an impost. And what the tariff did was it taxed the labor of non-resident aliens working in America, foreign corporations earning money in America, and everybody in the territories and possessions earning money under the federal jurisdiction. That's what the original legislation did. The Underwood-Simmons Tariff Act of October 3rd, 1913. It's an impost. It taxes foreign activity. It doesn't tax the labor of the American people. That's why nobody paid income tax on their labor or their work previous to World War II. There was no authority. And this is all shown very clearly in the 1939 code, the statutes at large, which we're going to look at later in another video. It's also shown very clearly in the original Underwood-Simmons Tariff Act legislation, which specifically redefines the United States for enforcement purposes within the tariff as being the territories and possessions not the 50 states. It's special legislation written for the territories and the possessions and income derived from federally taxable activities subject to an impost, a duty, or an excise. Foreign activity, exported goods, or commodities, licenses, and corporations. That's it. So you can't get a single leg of the subject matter jurisdiction platform assembled under a claim to a, a claim of authority under the 16th Amendment. It doesn't exist. 
no powers granted, no authority to write law, and they wrote an indirect tax tariff. They didn't write a direct tax legislation. Subject matter jurisdiction doesn't exist in the federal courts under the 16th Amendment. It has never existed. The whole prosecutorial charade has been a fraud. One great big huge extortion racket being run by the Internal Revenue Service and the Department of Justice, not for the benefit of the Treasury. I repeat, not for the benefit of the Treasury. The Treasury isn't getting the money because it's not a tax. And only taxes have to be deposited in the Treasury. So we're going to get to that later too. But subject matter jurisdiction absolutely cannot be established or taken under the 16th Amendment, which is the main heart of the fraud the courts have been perpetrating on you for 80 years. The whole thing is a fraud. The whole thing. And the proof is that the money doesn't go in the treasury, and we're going to look at that in a later video.